Hello everyone, this is Rob Thomas. Um, I'm going to take you through uh, a presentation today of Medial uh, 4.0. Um, so, yep, welcome everyone to this presentation. Just some brief program notes with regards to the, uh, the webinar today. Uh, a recording is being made of this webinar and that will be sent out to you after the event. And if you require the, uh, the slides as a handout, they'll also be made available after the event. Through the GoToWebinar uh, interface that you're using today, you are able to ask questions as well. So we've got um, a period of time at the end of this webinar where you can ask questions. I'll, I'll answer them then. If you want to ask questions throughout the presentation, you can do. But I'm going to address those at the end of the, uh, of the webinar, really, just to, to keep the flow going, so to speak. So, Medial 4.0. By way of an introduction, just to go through some kind of uh, recent history um, that most people are aware of, but I'd still get um, some questions about this today, so I just wanted to kind of um, crystallize this in people's minds. So uh, what happened um, really around about a, a year or so ago is most of the people that had the, um, the medial software, as it's called now, uh, it was a piece of software called Helix Media Library. It's, um, Real Networks had the, the kind of the Helix branding that went on that product. That product was uh, was always always had been developed by us as a company, but it had been white labelled as a as a Helix product. What happened uh, around about a year ago is Real Networks decided that the uh, they were no longer going to license the Helix products to end users, only to um, people that bake those Helix components into products, and it meant that um, we would kind of go it on our own in terms of uh, doing our product and cease using the the Helix branding on our product and and Helix product within our product as well. So the Helix Media Library became what it is today, uh, Medial. So that's you know, a relatively big change in terms of the, the components that we use within the software. That really leads into what I'm going to talk about for version 4. It's not a huge change um, because we're just swapping uh, a couple of bits out. Um, and realistically, it's a new name for the product as well. But most people were pretty comfortable with the fact that we were actually the developers of the product before. So we're just really taking ownership over that, that brand. So a few new things that happened off the back of this rebrand as well. We've got a new website with deal.com, which you can go to, which has got all information on the product and videos and bits and pieces, lots of interesting stuff there. That's really more from the point of view of showcasing the product, though, to kind of potential end users. In terms of things that are probably more interesting for people that are on the call today, we've got um, a documentation uh, website, which is uh, help.medial.com. Uh, this is really the kind of uh, the fine detail at this website and you can go there and you can search for bits and pieces so if you were an administrator of the system let's say or you were installing it or upgrading it that would be your best place to to go to the other thing that we've got as well is we've got this uh, new pam site pam just means product and account maintenance this is basically where you can log in you can log cases and you can get hold of the latest in installers and your license keys and all that sort of stuff as well so it's pam.medial.com if you don't have an account on the uh, pam.medial.com, just email uh, support and you can request the login and you can get in there and, and do all of those things as well. You can also log feature requests there as well, which is something that quite a lot of people ask us for. The other thing, and this isn't something that we've kind of officially um, launched yet, although it, it is there in kind of um, late sort of beta stage, <laughs> we're kind of pointing people there at the moment, is we're creating a new knowledge base website as well, which is at support.medial.com. So this is kind of, you know, a first port of call if you've got a particular, you know, error or particular thing that you, you're having a challenge with with Medial, you'd probably go here and ask a question. And then if you couldn't find the answer there, then um, log a support case through the, the PAM site. So these things are, are being um, developed all the time. And you'll probably find within the next few weeks, There'll be quite a few changes here as well so we're, we're trying to tie a lot of these things together so it makes it easy for our customers to find answers to the questions 
and get at the things that they need to as well. The other thing as well, um, I mean, it's not that much of an interest to the people that are on the call today, but we do have um, uh, a, a person over in the in the US now, which is David Lowey, and he's developing our business in the US because we have a, a huge amount of customers um, outside of the UK and outside of Europe as well. So I'm just going to show you a short video that kind of uh, previews um, what Medial is all about. And then I'm going to continue on with the presentation about version four of Medial. Media is being produced in ever larger quantities by educators and in the enterprise. Medial is a media management system that provides an all-in-one solution to help organizations handle this increasing throughput and demand. The definition of Medial describes something that is situated in the middle and our name defines perfectly what we do. Medial can act as your enterprise YouTube and fit in between those that want to publish content and those that want to view it. Within the virtual learning environment, Medial fits in between teachers and students, allowing the creation of video-based assignments and submission of video for assessment in industry-leading systems like Blackboard and Moodle. Medial can also provide the bridge between lecture capture systems and classes of students by facilitating one-click big red button recording. And lastly, Medial can allow you to protect, schedule, and publish your live events for playback on all devices, whether live or on demand. So, whatever your media strategy is, and whoever is producing and viewing your content, let Medial be at the center of what you do. So hopefully that gives you a flavor of, uh, of what Medial is, although you probably already know what Helix Media Library is, given that you already have it. Um, but that's the kind of the, um, the Medial uh, brand now. And as part of this, just to kind of confirm as well, you know, a lot of people have asked this question in terms of going from uh, V3 of uh, Helix Media Library to, to V4 of uh, Medial. Uh, we're swapping out the, the Helix server for the Wowser streaming engine. And this gives us a lot of uh, flexibility in terms of new stuff that we can do with the software because the, uh, the Wowser streaming engine, which is from a company called Wowser Media Systems, is a very, very um, kind of multifaceted uh, streaming platform. Uh, in my opinion, you know, much, much more flexible than, than the Helix platform. So it's going to give us a lot of flexibility in our um, upcoming roadmap. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. So major features that are in version four of the product. As the video mentioned at the end, uh, live streaming. So we have the facility to be able to do to display live streams within the software and also uh, archive live streams as well. So once they're finished, we can archive them. So you'll see here within the software, there's this kind of live now button that appears when you've got live streams running. Um, and you've also got this kind of workflow that we've got now of really accepting any input. It doesn't really matter what you're using in terms of an encoder. Then what we do is we protect the stream, we can archive the stream, and we can schedule the stream to be available at a particular time. And then we can obviously stream that back to any particular device as well. So I'm going to show you a quick demo of how the live streaming feature works. I'm going to do this on my, um, my PC rather than my Mac because I don't actually have an encoder. <laughs> on my PC, so I'm going to do it on, uh, sorry, I don't have a, uh, an encoder on my Mac, so I'm going to do it on my PC. So you can really use any encoder that you like. Most people that are familiar with live streaming will, will know what an encoder is and what an encoder looks like, but this is an example of one here. This is a, a free encoder called the Adobe uh, Flash Media Live Encoder. We're actually going to be um, bringing out um, a live streaming app for um, for phones and tablets soon as well. But this one here is just to demonstrate it, really. So that's 
the encoder that's running on my PC. Now, within Medial uh, itself, if we go uh, back and we go to um, and we go to configure a live stream. So within uh, Medial 4, there's a, a live streaming section and you've got all of these different live streams that are running. Now I've set one up ahead of time, but you could add a new one, but I just want to illustrate to you how easy it is to use this live streaming feature. And I'll show you my live stream that I set up. So simply you're adding a name, a description of your live stream, it's all free text. You're deciding where you want the live stream to be archived to upon completion of the event. You're, you've got here um, a file name. Now this is the, the file name of your live stream that you need to put into your encoder. And this is kind of generated on a per stream basis by Medial. So every time you set up a live stream, it gives you this file name. So I'm going to copy that. And then you decide what, you know, you want the appearance of the, the player page to be here. So you can see, you know, I can show embed code, show comments, show, show a Twitter feed, have a particular thumbnail appear. And then I can also decide um, when I want the stream to be available, whether I want it to be scheduled between a particular date and time or whether I want it to be always available. Your uh, assets or categories, you can decide which groups or uh, which group or groups of users will be able to see it. So that's my live stream there. So you would literally just add your live stream, grab the live stream name from here, and then on my PC, I've got my encoder set up here. And you'll see I've already pasted in the stream name, but I'll do it again just to show you. And then this has the streaming server name of my medial streaming server as well. So this is my encoder, ready to go with me here doing this live event as we speak. I click on start, and that's started pushing the live stream up to the server. If I go to uh, my media library and I go to live now and I go to Rob's live stream. See my kind of Twitter feed here at the side that I've added. And then the live stream is going right here, right now. So that's how easy it is to create your live stream. Pretty easy, nothing to it. So all that you need is a, an encoder and you need to be able to point that live stream at the medial system, how I've, how I've shown there. This is fully documented. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, not going through it in that much detail here, but this is very easy to, to get set up and we can help you to do that as well. So I'm going to shut my uh, PC down with that on it. Okay. So back to the slides. We've also got a video that showcases how this uh, live streaming uh, tech works as well. So I'll just quickly show you this video. It's very, very short.
Okay, great. So if you've got any questions on live streaming and you want to uh, upgrade to V4 and go ahead uh, with using the live streaming feature, get in touch with us, support at medial.com and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll schedule in to upgrade you. The other thing that we've introduced as well, um, both within the context of the, um, the Moodle and the Blackboard integrations and also within the software itself, is a facility to be able to record your webcam. So uh, as well as the current existing tiles that you have to upload a new media item and choose an existing one, you've now got the ability to record your webcam. This is also on the um, regular upload wizard as well. And this is kind of what it looks like. You have the ability to uh, record video or just record audio if you want. And then you have the ability to uh, to trim that video as well uh, prior to um, uploading it to the medial system. So it's pretty useful for things like um, student and instructor feedback, for example. Improvements that we've made to the software as well. So one of the things that um, a lot of people will be aware of from the Helix Media Library product is that it only ran on uh, server uh, 2008, Windows Server 2008, which was obviously a little bit behind the curve. So now, um, if you want to, you can install it on uh, Windows 2012 as well. Um, you can also uh, install either a, a full version of Medial or a transcoder instance. I'll go into what a transcoder instance, instance is a little bit later on in another slide. The other thing as well to say about the sort of installer or installer updater is that whereas before we had an installer and an updater application, um, the same application does both now. So it will install the product or update the product. What we've had a lot of is people um, upgrading to the new version, but also at the same time migrating from an old hardware platform to a new one. And you know, this is something that we can do for you as well if you need to, because a lot of people are very keen to get onto Windows Server 2012. We've improved the performance of the transcoder as well. So whereas in the past, uh, the transcoder was using Helix technology and um, on certain file types could be um, relatively um, slow compared to our new transcoder anyway. So what we're seeing with Medial is around about um, a 30 to 40% improvement on the speed of the transcoder. So if you've had issues with that in the past, that's certainly something that we can help you out with. And you know, you'll, you'll get that added a benefit by upgrading to V4. You can as well, um, this is something that you should probably only do um, in terms of um, having cooperation with our support department is you can tweak the encoding profile. So there's some encoding profile files that sit on the server where you can actually edit um, the command line to, to make the command line do um, sort of more expert things if you're, if you're that way inclined. I know we have quite a, a lot of people that are kind of uh, hobbyists with um, encoding and transcoding. So if you've got any ideas on that front, certainly let us know. You can also dictate um, how the encoding works both on your regular medial instance and transcoding instances as well. And again, we'll go through what those are in just a second. Some people had asked for the ability for administrators to assign content to particular users. So now we can do that. So the use case here might be a teacher or a lecturer giving some content to an administrator of the system and then the administrator wanting to put that content into the teacher's personal category so that they could access that within something like Moodle or Blackboard. So we can do that now. There's this little um, person's head type icon that you can click on when you're an admin and you can assign the content to a particular person, which is pretty useful. The actual media listing within Medial in the past um, wasn't particularly intelligent about letting you know um, how ready the file was or, or the percentage that it had uh, transcoded. This is all done in real time now, so you'll see this going up uh, a single percentage point at a time as, uh, as the file goes through the process. And also at the end, when it's encoded, yes, you're actually able to click here on this little yes link and, and get to the file as well, which is, you know, a small improvement, but it's something that a lot of people asked for. 
in medial now as well, whereas before we used to have the link to the actual um, page in medial, what we do now is, is slightly different. So we actually have a link that goes to a full page uh, video player. So here I've got the link. So whereas before this would go to just this page that I'm on now, if we go to this link now, what we get is what most people had asked for in the past, was a, a full page video player. And this is kind of the way that, that YouTube does it. So this is this is the, the direction we went in because it was much easier to kind of give people this link and then the video would play within this page. We also introduced a new upload control, which because we're doing a chunked upload now, it will actually resume upload even if your internet connection is lost or your machine dies or whatever whatever happens. So if you go back to the browser uh, session, then it should upload from the point at which you were at uh, before before the process um, stopped. So, you know, this for example, a lot of people would say, well, I kind of got to 90% and, and then, you know, my internet went or whatever. This will now continue uh, after the reconnect, which is, uh, you know, a, a good feature, especially if you're uploading a big file. Another thing that we did, and this is something that a lot of people asked for, was increase the upload limit. We were kind of constrained by Microsoft technology before uh, to what um, the underlying web server would accommodate, which is which is IAS, that's the web server that we use. We've actually found a way around this now, so we've increased the upload limit to 100 gigs if you want, because um, there's obviously lots of people uploading these much larger files now, so we can do that now. Uh, we have responsive embed code as well, which means it's responsive to, you know, particular uh, sizes of, of screens. So to go back to my previous example, this full page uh, player here, you'll see as I make this uh, browser smaller, the player becomes smaller. So it's completely responsive, uh, the embed code now, uh, whereas it wasn't before. So you'll see here, go to the slide that this option here that appears in in v4 is this 100 percent option this is the responsive option so if you want to embed the video as responsive this is the one you want to choose we've also upgraded the version of the jw player that we're using we're using jw player six now we've been using five before we're soon to upgrade that to seven as well because um, they've uh, they bought that out, so that's all coming. Obviously, if you have medial, you're you're fully licensed for the JW player as well. If you want to use it for other things, students now can select content from their personal category within things like Blackboard or Moodle. So before, what would happen within our Blackboard and Moodle integrations was that a student could literally just upload a media file and that was it. So they couldn't really create a body of work within the LMS integrations that we had. Now, if you want to, it is configurable. You can turn that on so that a student can create a kind of personal category of, of the work that they've uploaded and select from that. And then improvements specifically with our um, LMS integrations with Blackboard and Moodle. So with Moodle, um, we had a lot of issues with our launch pop-up having quite a lot of scrolling within it, which made the experience on things like devices like the iPad um, not particularly good because it's quite hard, <laughs> if not impossible, to scroll uh, within a window on these uh, touch devices. So what we've done is we've, um, we've basically condensed everything down so that there isn't any scrolling now. So it's a much, much um, cleaner experience that you'll have on all the different devices and there isn't really any scrolling to go through either so everything that the user needs to do is there on the screen when they click to launch the pop-up in Moodle. We've also got a feedback plugin coming soon so that um, a teacher in Moodle could give feedback um, within, the, um, within the gradebook within Moodle. We also introduced some uh, custom text when people uh, enter LTI so that whereas before um, when people came into the Moodle and Blackboard integrations, 
it was much more difficult to kind of give them custom messages and custom prompts and custom text around the login boxes. We've made that so that it's much easier for you to customize that yourself now. And also upon exit as well. So when the, when the window closes um, within Blackboard and Moodle, you can now put your own text in there, you know, um, anything that you like really within that space. The other thing as well um, in terms of Moodle is that we found a lot of time with student submissions, for example, that um, students, when they were making submissions through Medial, they weren't necessarily uh, saving the page within Moodle. Um, and they assumed that as the Medial uh, pop-up shut down, that they were done effectively. And this is really a Moodle thing, to be fair. Um, but what we've done is we've allowed it so that the, um, the actual pop-up for LTI would shut down um, gracefully. So you can delay the shutdown of that pop-up within Moodle. So for example, once a student's made their submission, if you want to display a message like you must, you know, to complete this assignment, you must click save here at the base of this page, or you must go through this particular process, or if you want to put a message to the student, upon submission of their um, their assignment, then you can put that and you can delay the shutdown of that pop-up um, to display that message so that they don't really have an excuse for saying, you know, oh, I didn't know what I was doing and I thought it had been submitted, et cetera, et cetera. The dog ate my homework, you know. <laughs> That's a kind of modern day equivalent, I guess. In Blackboard, um, again, we've, we've eliminated the scrolling within the pop-up and introduce these things um, for the custom entry and exit. And there's obviously the inclusion of uh, the webcam capture and the student selection of content within Blackboard as well. So little changes within Blackboard. Other things that we've done in terms of uh, deployment options uh, for Medial. So now we have a way of doing high availability. So a lot of our larger clients like to deploy uh, Medial as a load balance pair. This has kind of two benefits. One, it makes it highly available um, and you can do load balancing. But two, as well, it doubles the speed of the, uh, the transcoding because each of the Medial instances, regardless of whether they're being used to serve web pages or serve content, will still be doing transcoding as well. So, you know, additional licenses are required for that, but that's something that can be done now, whereas done before. We can scale uh, your deployment in terms of transcoding as well. So I spoke about transcoding instances a little bit earlier. What transcoding instances are is they're a very lightweight version of Medial that just does transcoding and you can deploy these on additional bits of uh, hardware around your central Medial installation. So this is really good for things like um, virtual environments where you can spin up a VM, load on the medial transcode, and then that will um, do transcoding and, 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 and make sure that the transcoding queue is, is dealt with more quickly. And you can add one more transcoder or you can add a hundred more transcoders. It, it, it scales as much as you want it to. And in terms of pricing, we can be, um, we can be very flexible on price based on volume as well. So if you're interested in that, certainly get in touch with us. The other thing as well to do with the high availability is you can obviously can combine uh, a high availability setup with a scalable setup in terms of transcoding. So again, our larger customers will deploy uh, a load balance pair uh, so that they've got this kind of fault tolerance and then they put transcoders around that so they increase throughput. So an example here might be a university that originally deployed our software as a kind of um, internal YouTube type system and then plugged it into their Moodle and then found that lots of students were submitting content around, um, you know, around, the, uh, around the end day or around the end time of the assignment. And then they found that they needed the extra transcoding and they also found that it was a, a kind of mission critical service and needed to be in line with their Moodle or their Blackboard where they already, already had this load balancing. So it's kind of, you know, we're doing a lot of the driving of the LMS systems these days just purely because video is so important. So yeah, this is something 
to consider if, if you're kind of at a point where the services become very important internally because you know however good we make our software there's always a chance that you know um, things can go down it is just a single instance of the software so again if you're interested in this get in touch with us and you know we can always be very flexible on pricing uh, to scale these uh, installations of medial the other thing as well um, which may be of interest to, to people is that um, the WOWS streaming engine, so the kind of the underlying streaming server that we use now within our software, has the ability to, to do uh, caching. Um, so what we've done is we've introduced the caching feature uh, within Medial, so that say if you had um, sites that had uh, poor levels of, of bandwidth, you could deploy uh, a WOWS streaming engine. Uh, instance at those sites and then the content would be cached at the um, at that site rather than having to constantly go to this uh, medial system in the middle so if there was uh, low levels of bandwidth here you, you could do that so we have that technology as well in place really by virtue of the fact that we're using the smile to streaming engine now so in this case you might have a, a medial already and then you want to deploy uh, caching infrastructure to all of these sites, you would just buy a, a WOWS or streaming engine for all of these sites, and we would help you to configure it as part of a kind of professional services implementation. So that's uh, V4. Um, obviously, go to our website, medial.com. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at uh, Media Library. If you want to schedule to upgrade or to talk to somebody about V4, then just email support at uh, medial.com. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a look at the questions. Uh, I'm going to play this just so that it's not super boring while I'm answering the questions. So if you've got any questions, feel free to um, put them in now, and I'm happy to answer them. Uh, okay, so so do we have any documentation uh, for live streaming in terms of the restriction uh, option and how that works? So um, two places to go to, as I said at the start of the uh, presentation, you can go to uh, help.medial dot com or support dot medial dot com probably your best route for that particular thing is um help dot medial dot com it has a section on live streaming and how it works can the video feature be used as an assignment submission type in Moodle uh, yeah so in Moodle um, we have a video submission type within within Moodle so when the uh, the teacher makes uh, the assignment um, they then get the opportunity to um, allow the um, the student to um, submit an assignment so yes the quote the answer to that question is yes it is a, as an assignment submission type does the transcoder work well with MPGs? I assume from that it's probably MPEGs. So yes, the transcoder that we're using now is is much much better than the, the Helix transcoder. So it works better. Its kind of um, success rate is much much higher. If you ever get a file that doesn't transcode, then you need to let us know kind of immediately, and we'll address that. But we have a much lower failure rate now. And actually, when the file fails now you get a lot more information within the media listing than what you got before and some kind of recommendations as well and what you need to do um, what we've got here uh, does full screen video page from the share link supersede the video page including description comments ability to flag etc so the full screen video page is, is just an added extra really um, we just decided um, the video playback page should probably have that link on it rather than the link to the video page, the video playback page itself, just purely because people kept asking um, for a full video playback page rather than one with all of the, um, the embed code and everything around it. So yeah, 
I mean, it, it doesn't replace it. It's just in addition to it. If you want the link to the, the video page, it's just the one that's actually in the browser right here. So the, it's play slash and then the, the asset number, whereas the other one is player and then slash the asset number. So you've got play, which is the play page, and then player, which is the actual uh, video player. Uh, do you have a list of these features? They're great. It would be helpful to assess how uh, we'll use these new features after we upgrade. Yep, if you just email us, uh, we can get you a, a bullet point list. Or, um, you know, off the back of this presentation, you'll be sent a PDF that will uh, have the presentation that I've showed on it. Uh, is the offer of provision of an attended upgrade limited date-wise? I mean, we would always help you uh, with a, an attended upgrade of, uh, of Medial. Um, you just need to get in touch and we'll schedule it in. It's not really um, limited. Um, it's just something that we, we need to schedule in because the process of upgrading from V3 to V4 is relatively more involved just purely because we're migrating you from an old streaming server platform to a new one. Uh, for live, can I use an encoder that sends a live.sdp file? Um, essentially, it can use anything that works uh, with Wowser. We're not specifically linking to an SDP file within our, within our embed code. I think we're probably talking more something like um, uh, Wirecast to do that. As, as long as there's an incoming stream, um, that Wowza Media Server will accept, then it, it should work just fine because we're just doing an RTMP push uh, to, to Wowza. I think if you wanted to use something like that, you should probably get in touch with support and we can take a look at it. One of the things to say is that we're actually building out that feature a lot at the moment. So um, a later version of uh, V4 will, will have a lot more live stuff in it. So it might be that we'll, we'll cater for that as well. Will we be integrating with any other VLEs in the future? So yes, is the answer to that. Um, it's a kind of two-pronged answer, really. One is uh, we already have an integration with a system called um, Canvas. Um, that integration is just being um, improved upon within the next month or so. So we'll kind of fully launch that in terms of it being something that's visible um, and promoted very, very soon. We really integrate with any VLE, which is um, LTI compliant. So we use a technology called LTI, which is learning tools interoperability. Um, any VLE that has is LTI compliant and you can use LTI as um, an external tool provider, we would work with. So I would just suggest if you're looking at any particular VLE, get in touch with us. Most of them are LTI compliant. If we uh, can't do it for whatever reason, and there's a business case to do it, then we will. But the three main ones, Blackboard, Moodle, and Canvas, yeah, we certainly support. And Canvas is, is the new one that's kind of coming on board. We always had an integration for it, but we had some limitations with it, which we think we've got over now. Will the embed code work on a WordPress hosted blog? It's not something that I've ever tried, believe it or not. Although um, we wouldn't, I, that's probably not completely true, actually. So I did try it, but a long time ago, and it did work. I know that there is an issue with WordPress with um, like a cross-domain issue. Um, when you embed things using our uh, particular player, you don't normally get that because the server and the player are located on the same domain. So you shouldn't get any issues on a, on a WordPress blog. I'd be interested if you did. And it's something that we could certainly look to uh, get around if you did anyway. But I, I would think that it should be fine. But we don't actually use uh, WordPress, and it's not something I've tried. Encoder from Crestron, should, it should be fine. I mean, the, the best thing to do is to, to look up um, Wowza and see the things that they support, see the things that work with Wowza. Provided it works with Wowza, we'll find a way of making it work. It work if it doesn't, um, but I would imagine it it, it should do um, the Crestron ones. You know, they normally have a, a series of different outputs. Will the webinar be available offline? Yep. 
certainly I'm, I'm recording it as we speak so I'll be uploading that file to our medial instance and uh, YouTube so that you can watch it by either source when is the feedback plugin likely to be available very soon I would say within the next couple of months I've done a lot of testing on it I mean it's essentially there really but it just requires a bit more testing to make sure that it's uh, totally there so I would put a timeline on that of um, a couple of months any plans to increase the number of category levels? We don't at the moment. Um, so we have parent and subcategories at the moment. We kind of have a lot of challenges already um, with that because we kind of drill quite deep into Active Directory and, um, and LDAP. So we don't have any plans to do that at the moment. Is the transcoding feature enabled by default for a live stream? Um, no, so you can turn it on or off. Um, you don't have to have it um, archive the live stream upon completion. So you, you can turn that on or off. Are you able to set retention periods for up uh, for uploaded content? Not currently, although it's something that we're taking a look at. Does Medial deliver multiple rip rates for different viewing situations? Not currently, but that is coming in the in the next version, both for VOD and for live, uh, because we're using this new version of the, the JW player that makes that possible. Are videos sent as flash? They're sent as both, um, but you can default to one or the other. Most of our customers seem to be defaulting to HTML5 now, because flash looks like it's on its way out. Well, it has been for a long time, slow death but um, yeah it's getting there how does the wowser license work can we integrate with another wowser license the wowser license license basically works that if you're under a current upgrade and support agreement with us you're going to get a wowser license thrown in as part of your support agreement it's an oem wowser license so it doesn't entitle you to get support from wowser only support from us you couldn't use um, an existing Wowser license with our product. Not from a from a technical point of view, you totally could because there's not really any difference. But from a licensing point of view, we're not actually permitted to allow people to do that. It has to be an OEM license, which is the one that you know we license from Wowser. Does the stream have to be archived? E.g., could you do a live stream in 24 hours? Event, not save it, just use the portal. Yeah, it doesn't have to be archived at all. You could totally do that um, and just have it going 24 by 7. Uh, we've used it on, uh, this is just somebody saying that they've used it on a WordPress blog and it worked really well. Um, we have edgy blogs, so there you go. Question answered. Um, it does work on WordPress. How many live streams can be simultaneously viewed? Wow, okay, it's the how long is a present stream <laughs> question. So from the point of view of Wowzer, I mean, if you look on their website and their forums, you'll see that they kind of, they they've done um, load testing in terms of a certain amount of megabits or gigabits per second that a particular server uh, could do and then beyond that they're kind of saying well you know that's what a single instance could do don't quote me on that i would look it up on on their site certainly hundreds of, of viewers um, but what we are doing is in our new version of the software we're building in a support for their kind of cloud-based service to so say if you did a live stream and you want to show it internally through your media instance but you also wanted to push it out to the cloud as well you, you could do that so they have a, a cloud-based service that we can push out to that's in a new version of our software not in the current version of our software but I would certainly say you know with some authority you could get you know a few hundred for sure from a, a from a single instance is single sign-on in the works um, we've had quite a few requests for it at the moment. It's not on the immediate um, roadmap, just purely because most of what we do within the LMS um, arena is is single sign-on anyway, because it's using LTI. And what it means is, is that as you come through into Moodle, you shouldn't have to log on any more than once when you use the tool, or if you're not using Active Directory or LDAP to log the users on through the LMS system, then they wouldn't need to log on at all. So it is, it is single sign-on already. Um, certainly interested to hear what single sign-on technologies people are using. The ones that have been highlighted to me are um, 
SAML2 and um, Shibboleth. Those are the two that we're taking a look at. But in terms of the immediate roadmap, it's not something that we we have at the moment on the immediate roadmap. Okay, some great questions there. You can uh, feel free to email me any questions that you've got or email support as well, support at medial.com or robert.thomas at medial.com. I'm happy to answer any questions that come off the back of the webinar. We have one more um, uh, question here. Oh, videos have you have shown in the presentation are very bitty. Any reason for this? <laughs> It's basically because of go to to webinar. So yeah, unfortunately, there's not really a way of me showing you these these videos in in better quality. On my screen, they look fantastic and they're they're really great. But because uh, go to webinar, this technology um, in terms of the screen refresh rate is is quite low on this. So you'll probably find that the videos don't look that great. I've really put them up just purely so I'm not just showing. A single slide at the end of this presentation because I view a lot of webinars and you see a single slide at the end of the presentation it gets pretty boring great okay so thanks everybody uh, for your time uh, as I say I'll make this presentation available on our medial instance and I'll also make it available on YouTube uh, for people to watch there as well uh, thanks for your time, everyone, and I hope you get in touch soon and we can help you to migrate to the new version of Medial. Thanks, everyone.